there they'll find the Japanese logistics module. On this module, there is a, what's called a passive common berthing mechanism. This is the structural interface between it and the node 2. Um, there's eight covers which uh, protect this surface um, before it is installed and prevent any debris from getting on that surface so that uh, we can maintain a, a good pressure integrity and a solid leak check uh, when the modules are brought together. To remove these covers, Rick Linehan is going to translate down to the bottom of the module, remove each of these covers individually, and hand them up to Garrett Reisman, who will be positioned on top of the module with a bag for stowing them. You'll notice in this graphic, there aren't a lot of handrails for Rick to hold onto down in this area, so that's definitely going to be a challenge for us. He basically has to uh, use fingertip pressure onto the, um, onto the berthing mechanism itself to try to hold still. Once those covers are removed and the, and the bag is locked up, the crew will translate down along the end of the Japanese module, where Garrett Reisman will perform the next task to prepare it for unbirth. There are two heater cables, which are installed to provide uh, thermal protection while the module is in the payload bay. He removes those connectors and stows them on a bracket on the side of the uh, orbiter sill. From there, uh, the crew is going to head up to the space lab pilot to work on the OTCM. Meanwhile, uh, the Japanese logistics module await its unbirth for installation at the end of the EVA. The first work at the space lab pilot is going to be configuring some tools to assist in the assembly. There's some foot restraints which are uh, relocated and installed onto the pallet. Rick Linhan will install one of these foot restraints into the space station arm and ingress it. Uh, at that point, he'll ride the arm over to the position of one of the OTCMs uh, for its removal. Meanwhile, Garrett Reisman will be free floating around the pallet. He has some electrical connectors which provide keep alive power and uh, thermal protection for the arm. Uh, well, so he'll be removing those connectors and storing them onto a bracket. Rick Linhan also has an electrical connector he has to remove from the OTCM. Uh, this is providing thermal uh, heater power during the um, uh, period while it's stowed on station. Once that bracket is stowed, there's two clamps which he releases, and that uh, allows the OTCM to be removed from its launch position on the pallet. He will then carry that OTCM, uh, translating in the space station arm, to meet up with Garrett Reisman, where it will be installed onto the end of the uh, first SPDM arm. Installing the OTCM consists of uh, securing four mechanical fasteners, and there's two electrical connections which provide power and data between the uh, OTCM and the rest of the body. From this point, basically the exact same thing happens on the opposite side of the carrier. There's a second OTCM which is going to be removed and installed onto its arm. One slight difference in how we perform this operation is uh, dictated by the need to get the Japanese module out of the payload bay. We can't have both space shuttle and space station robotic arms working at the same time. So we have a very uh, invested interest in stopping operations with a space, uh, space station arm. Rick Linehan will uh, get out of the space station arm and allow it to move to a clearance position. And uh, then he and Garrett Reisman will work together to finish up the OTCM installation free float. Um, at this time, the uh, space shuttle crew will be taking the Japanese logistics module out of the payload bay and installing onto its home on node two. That wraps up EVA-1. Again, that spacewalk is scheduled to start at 8.23 p.m. Central Time tonight.